I'm not sure we, what happened. We, we all did, Matt. It, okay. no, it, wasn't, it wasn't you. Um. So maybe we can use this lull. Um, as an undergrad, I used the textbook uh, Physical Biology of the Cell by Rob Phillips, um, which is a rather new biophysics textbook. So if, if you if people don't have sort of a resource to think about I'll, I'll look biological it up. molecules physically. S send me, send me, send me a, um, a link to that and I'll get a copy. Uh, yeah, sure. Do you want a legal link or maybe I shouldn't ask that question? <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, I will I, buy a copy. You'll of buy the it. You'll buy it. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's what um, I do. <laughs> uh, somehow, for some reason, I got dropped from the call. Yeah, we, 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 we all did. did. We all did, Bob. Oh, we okay. It was, a, it was a collision that knocked us all out of the Zoom. Right. I just, I, I, we have to. <laughs> Particle number was not conserved in this closure. Right. And so, so question, I, I just wanted to hear the end of you. How many times did the messenger RNA get used? Oh, the messenger. Oh, that's that long ago. Okay. So the messenger RNA, it was 20 times in, in this particular model. But when I was in graduate school, we used an enzyme to do a chemical reaction and we did it on uh, essentially a millimole scale of reactants. And so therefore, you know, this was, you know, orders and orders of magnitude number of times each individual enzyme molecule was used to carry that out. Okay. I'd have to go back to my thesis and look at the experimental section to get actual numbers for you. But, you know, we're talking millions and millions of times. Right. Okay. okay. So, and, and, uh, yeah, I don't think it would be that different inside of a cell either. Right. We should probably wrap this meeting up because we're late anyway. Um, well, this was interesting. I mean, we're, we're, we're slowly getting started here. Um, I mean, do people more or less understand what the point is here? I mean, like, like what, the, what the approach we're trying to take is? Did that all make sense or is that totally mysterious? I think the three levels will serve as a reference, at least for me. The yeah. fact that we actually computed something, it's a good sign. At least we actually computed something. Right. Well, we didn't. Yeah. What we want to do, we should probably have some very trivial reaction that, I mean, you know, these strings, we can just think of them as smile strings, you know, chemistry smile strings. <laughs> the, it doesn't really matter because they're just, they're, they're not, I mean, they don't have a particular, they don't have structural representation of things. Yeah, if um, it's just explicit strings going to other explicit strings, we could probably do a lot and not have to worry about the individual rewriting of a string to another string. Right. Uh, only if we're trying to do an unbounded thing where it's making arbitrarily long polymers and so on, do we need to worry about that? I think um, if we can get tags, sorry, if we can get token event graphs for you know the elementary kind of reactions that you would find in the first chapter of you know some book with single replacement, double replacement, synthesis, decomposition, that's a start. And then maybe, you know, proceeding to some more, more complicated kinds of reactions just right. to get those all demos. And then th having the strings actually correspond to, you know, ac actual reactions. I mean, that, that, that'll be a start and then work on those circulated. We can discuss it. And uh, right. But then, then things. what we got to understand is the extent to which, I mean, the big question is that this is, it's kind of amusing. I mean, this is just as we're going below physics. We're also here sort of going below chemistry. As in, we're trying to, you know, in physics, we think we understand space-time, but actually we say it's made of discrete atoms of space. Um, actually, I've got a new term, which I just invented in this thing about motion, which is atoms of change, which is the, the name for our elementary events. Um, okay. The, but anyway, the, the um, uh, yeah, so I mean, that's what we're trying to do here is we're trying to go below the traditional chemical, you know, descriptions of chemical processes and then see whether, in fact, it, it's interesting and it, it's interesting for the physics project to understand whether, you know, in physics, we want to know does it matter? that there is a below for, um, you know, for these atoms of space? Does it matter that the atoms of space aren't just sort of continuous space? 
And so similarly here, we're asking, does it matter that, um, you know, okay, look, does it matter that there are individual molecules? Because a lot of chemistry, we could have a fiction that all there is is a chemical field. And we there, still get there, the same result. Well, there's going to be some sort of chemist observer, I imagine, who, who more yes. often than not, is allowed to or can afford to coarse grain significantly. So I well, think right. the, that, the, observer can, question. the observer question arises quite naturally. Right. The, the, the real question is, does molecular biology involve nanoperception? You mean, do we have to engineer new kinds of observers in order to operate in that domain? Unlike, well, or unlike, does molecular biology... Yeah. Yes. Does molecular biology do that? Does molecular biology care about things happening right. on... on a nanoscale, so to speak, in a way that the chemist does not. Or put another way, have the chemist simply missed all the stuff that, um, uh, you know. Oh, like the, like Muhammad al Karashi is doing some work with this, right? Where there are these different features of proteins that we, we don't notice, but with, with ML, he's starting to yes. identify them, right? That's, that's an example, right? Oh, or more to the point here, the dynamics of these chemical processes, we just are ignoring those in doing ordinary chemistry, but it turns out that they matter. All right, I got to go to the um, uh, this other, um, I think we have to go to another meeting and I don't know what's happening. Um, gosh, this all got a bit messed up. Oh, well, well, if anybody, I don't know whether we lost our, our live stream folk and they had a number of no i, I think they're still there i, I got a, a okay. message on rocket chat from somebody who's still listening okay okay the, um uh well okay the um the various comments here which i think are interesting well we'll have to we'll have to pick this up another time all right so we're we're you know, having just posted a 250-page treatise about metamathematics, the question is, uh, you know, is this metachemistry? And um, what you see, metachemistry would be this study of sort of all possible chemical reactions. And um, that's, uh, uh, anyway, no matter. Okay, well, this is, an, and I mean, yeah. And then the other, the other big thing is the applications of this to molecular computing. Um, and how we think about computational processes going on in, because people have imagined that the only way you can kind of do computation with molecules is through having something that is represented in the molecule itself, like in a piece of DNA, for example, or in the structure of, you know, how you fit together pieces of DNA. And the question is, can you also represent computation in the dynamics of what's happening in the time dynamics of what's happening. Um, and we don't, you know, in traditional computation, we're dealing with input output, but we've also been interested in studying computation in which the computation, oh, okay. So the, the question is, is there computation in which the journey is the computation, so to speak, in which the evaluation graph is a representation of the computation rather than the result of the evaluation graph being the representation of the computation. Right. Right. And, um, mm -hmm. if, and that's the, I mean, the motivation for this, so fascinating how all these things come together. The motivation for this is the, is the physical universe in which everything we experience is the process of the computation. The end right. result of the universe is something, you know, well, who knows what we think the end result of the universe is, but that's not what we care about. Seriously. Our experience is based on the ongoing computation of the universe. Um, so even like reaction pathways, these could be computations that. Well, it's the, the pathways. Yes, I mean the the whole idea here is that the the relevant thing to think about, just like you know you've got a cellular automaton, you've got its whole space time pattern. That's interesting, whereas you might have thought that the only thing you would care about is. You give some input to the cellular automaton and you watch what the output is in the end. And similarly for chemistry, I'm claiming that what is mostly being done is to 
mostly being concentrated on is what's the output in the end. It's not, not quite the same thing, but it, it's because uh, anyway, I mean, we're talking about can it matter what the sort of lower level molecular dynamics below the level where all you measure is chemical concentrations? Can that matter? Is there information stored in the structure of those in those detailed structures? And particularly, is molecular biology waving a giant flag at us saying, look, I've got membranes and enzymes, you know, embedded in membranes and so on, because I'm using this sort of molecular scale information that is different from what you do in ordinary liquid phase chemistry, for example. So anyway, that, that's the idea. All right, well, we should wrap up for now. Thanks, if there's anybody on the live stream, thanks for joining us. Otherwise, um, uh, until the next time. <laughs>